Hello, a very warm welcome to all of you who come for this webinar. Hi, my name is Jonathan Yao. I'm a crew staff the conduct to serve at East Asia School of Theology. Again, tonight's topic, tonight's topic on the webinar known as Passing Through the Waters, which is a subject on spiritual formation. This seminar, of course, is part of Crew 50th Anniversary and East 30th Anniversary Celebration. This, uh, this series of webinar is known as Higher Ground. And tonight is the last uh, for this series, but I'm telling you, this is something of a great treat to you because we're gonna hear from two speakers who are amply qualified to speak in this area. But not only amply qualified, but deeply passionate for this area of spiritual formation. Now, let me pause here and, uh, and just say that our speakers were to encourage you to take out your journal the e-journal or physical one for your note taking later it will come in very handy all right so you can just quickly you know uh, find find your journal and, and bring it next to you or, or device if you, you tap it in and so on all right i'm going to just uh, pause here and i welcome uh there are two speakers for tonight one is dr steve martin and the other one is uh, miss Jo liu uh, allow me to begin by um, introducing uh, Dr. Steve Martin, before I come in, ask him to come in and say a few words to us. He is the Associate Professor of Spiritual Formation at Asbury Theological, Theological Seminary in Wilmore, Kentucky, USA. He is an elder in the Kentucky Annual Conference of the United Methodist Church. He has been a pastor for 28 years before he joined Asbury Seminary in 2004. Now, Steve has also served um, in four different states as a pastor. So he has rich pastoral experience even before he joined in 2004, uh, 2004 uh, in Asbury. He was also the first director of spiritual formation for the Kentucky Annual Conference of the United Methodist Church. He was born and bred in Texas, as they say. All right. Now he received his PhD in formative spirituality from the Q. The uh, Decay uh, University in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, where he studied under Father Adrian Van Kam and Dr. Susan Muto. He has rich leadership experience within the four different annual conferences of the United Methodist Church. Now, Steve um, has spoken in, in many uh, uh, settings in the US as well as uh, outside of US. He does a lot of conferencing, teaching, writing, and preaching in the areas of lay and clergy spiritual formation. He is also very involved in the overall formation of the seminarians in Esprit Seminary. Okay? He is committed to reclaim Wesleyan theology and spiritual formation, not just for the church local, but also the church global. As, um, as and I'm a Baptist, not a Methodist, but I think I fully in sync with it when he, he just, I read a quotation, it says, his passion is to help recover the Wesleyan discipleship and missional DNA in spiritual formation. And that resonates. I mean, hey, disciple making and, and mission, that's the heartbeat of uh, what I'm called for as a crew staff as well as serving in my church. Um, he's married to Diane, and they are blessed with three grown children. And do you know how many grandchildren they have all together? He has 10 of them. Wow, I'm running out of fingers, you know, 10 grandchildren. Praise the Lord for each one of them. Well, do you know that he has actually uh, uh, came to Singapore before and spoken at Wesley Methodist Church and TTC, Trinity Theological College, when he was here in 2014. All right. So let me, uh, let me just pause here and then invite um, Dr. Steve to just come and say hello before I introduce uh, uh, Mrs. Joe later on. Uh, Steve, you want to say a few words? Greetings, everyone, from uh, Asbury Theological Seminary in, uh, in the United States. And I, I especially want to uh, congratulate East uh, Asia School of Theology on your 30th anniversary. Uh, that's a big deal. And 50, 50 years of service uh, there in Singapore from, uh, for uh, crew. 
It's a great privilege for me to be with you this evening and to uh, welcome uh, and to be a part of the great Singaporean community of faith. And I know there are others uh, from around the world. So I bless all of you in the name of Jesus and really do look forward to sharing with you and with my colleague, Joe Lou. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Steve. Uh, it has been very gracious to do that now. Uh, I was actually introduced to Steve by the next speaker, the person I will introduce. Huh? Uh, so meet this Joe Go or, or Joe Liu, uh, maiden name, or Joe for short. This is what she likes to be called. She's very casual uh, and friendly. But she has been on staff. Uh, she's my, my fellow staff as well. Uh, she's been on staff with True Singapore for 26 years. Wow, that's more than the quarter century. Talking about 26. Do you know how many countries are represented in tonight's seminar? There are 22 countries who have registered for these seminars. You know, people from 22 countries. Can you, can you imagine that? And so a very warm welcome again for those of you who have been, not been welcomed by me. But uh, really, as I look at the countries, it span literally the world, uh, beginning with Singapore, which is the bulk of the people, but across Southeast Asia and into the Indo-Chinese countries of Vietnam, Laos, uh, and Cambodia, and then further out, further a few to Central Asia, to India, uh, all the way through to Africa, then to Europe, and of course, North America, North and South America. So there's 22 different countries uh, in total. Now back to Joe. So, so for 13 years, he has served in the local university in Singapore, uh, served on the campus a team, as well as serve as a trainer in the South uh, Training Center, known as Great Commission Training Center. Then uh, she joined East, the East Asia School of Theology, and served in the Partners in Ministry, which is our training and equipping ministry for women, for wives, or full-time ministers or students. Uh, that's in 2008 and uh, 2011. She also taught uh, international women uh, in English at East, as well as in Asbury. She's also a certified MBTI coach, and she really enjoys helping students at ease to grow in self-awareness and coaches them in their personal development. Now, when Jo is excited, she is really excited because she's passionate about what she does, what God has called her to do. She's particularly excited about the spiritual formation of women and family. Together with her husband, uh, Benson, Dr. Benson Go. They have served as educators in the Christian parenting uh, courses at her church, at their church, Covenant Evangelical Free Church, and mentors, uh, they are also mentors to couples in their own church. Yeah. So Joe has taught uh, at East as a resident faculty, and, uh, and she continues to do so with great passion, not just in Singapore, but also desires uh, to minister across Asia and the world. So Joe, can I invite you to come and say a few words uh, and for tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. And thank you, Dr. Steve, for being with us tonight. Welcome, everybody from all over the world. A special welcome uh, to my friends and family from Singapore, Kentucky, and different parts of the states like Kansas, North Carolina. And thank you, friends from Japan, India, Mongolia. You either woke up very early this morning or you rushed back from work just to join us. So thank you. Welcome you again. Hmm. Okay, can you still hear me? I don't see myself, but okay. Uh, can I? Okay, I need to be in. All right, thank you so much. Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, okay, thank you so much uh, about uh, Steve and Joe for that opening statement. Uh, I like to. You know, give us a glimpse of what you'll be expecting for tonight uh, at the webinar. So we, we're dividing up this webinar for the next hour and a half into three sections, part one, part two, and part three. In each of these, there will be approximately 20 minutes or so of, uh, of actual talk by Steve and, and Joe, followed by a very short time of Q&A. Speaking of which, please, as we go along, especially the first part, uh, as we go along this talk, type in your, your questions in a Q&A box. Okay, we'll try to get uh, to it as soon as we can, but type it in, please. Uh, you know, uh, just be, be um, 
Can't can't lie. I just go ahead and do it. And then, uh, then the second part is similar. We have a twenty minutes to talk followed by Q and A, and finally another talk on part three. And then after that, we will have a time of commitment. I think Joe will lead us in that. Uh, she lead us in that time. We'll give a short announcement, key information that you need to know, followed by the rest of the Q and A time. And that's a time where it's a bit more flexible. We will end it. I mean, by 9.30 or so, you, you can choose to leave or you can continue on and uh, listen to the rest of the questions being addressed uh, by both uh, Keith and, and, and Joe. All right. So again, uh, please post your question in the Q&A box. Uh, allow me to open us with a time of prayer. Let us pray, shall we? Our Father in heaven, we are grateful that we are being formed in you for your glory and for the edification of the saints. So would you, dear Lord, tonight turn our hearts towards you as we hear your words being preached and taught to Dr. Steve and also Ms. Joe. Open our hearts to you and let your servant teach us both your word as well as through their experience. And so we commit this time to you. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Dr. Steve, over to you. Thank you, Jonathan. Over the uh, last several years, I think all of us, wherever we are located in the world, uh, have felt a lot of stress. Uh, if you know the account uh, uh, in the Gospels of Jesus in a boat out with all of his disciples, there are several of these accounts, and, and suddenly the winds from the north come down upon them. Uh, the Sea of Galilee uh, is well below sea level, and not all that far north of the Sea of Galilee is Mount Hermon, and uh, winds and storms just come suddenly uh, upon the people from uh, Mount Hermon. Uh, uh, and, and the waves come up over them. And so you'll read several times in the Gospels where the disciples yelled out. They thought they were going to die. Well, we've been through, uh, let's uh, name it without, without getting depressed here at the beginning, but we've been through what? We've been through a, a worldwide pandemic. Um, we have seen violence across the world on a scale that uh, we just, uh, it's, it's unimaginable to us, violence and war. Uh, we've, we've seen political uh, settings that should be stable that uh, seem to uh, collapse into what we would call tribalism. Um, we've, uh, 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 the, the, the whole situation with uh, Ukraine has been uh, devastating to see the violence in Ukraine. Um, there's violence in, in other nations uh, uh, going on as well. We don't want to leave anyone out. Uh, millions upon millions of people have suffered from these things. I, I think the Probably in, in a global situation, the, the worst thing that's happened to us is uh, uh, what uh, can be called the, 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 the triumph of individualism, which has really led to a collapse of, of a transcendent understanding of who we are as human beings and, and an elimination of a, of a transcendent uh, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit of, of God, and, and then that's resulted in a universal collapse of truth in our worldwide cultures. And so what's replaced it? Uh, propaganda, pop culture, uh, followed by destruction of human beings by death. So um, I, I kind of feel like sometimes I'm I'm, I'm like one of the disciples, and I go to the bow of the boat where Jesus has fallen asleep in the midst of this terrible storm, and I'm shaking him. I say, wake up, Jesus. Uh, wake up. Lord, help us. Lord, help us. And I also hear him giving us a great invitation here, and that, that invitation uh, we'll see uh, on Monday, Thursday coming from him. And basically he said, wake up, wake up during all of this. I'm trying to talk to you in the midst of this storm. 
and pray that the trial does not overwhelm you. So let me turn this over now to my colleague, uh, Joe Lou, uh, who's deeply respected uh, in Singapore and uh, certainly deeply respected by me. Thank you, Joe. Yes, uh, thank you, Dr. Steve. I think it's the same over here in Asia. Yeah, we have gone through so much since the start of 2022. Uh, we have been off to a very rocky start. Every month, we, we are bombarded by a new crisis, new crisis that dominated our news. And so we have been through seeing wars happening, political, social unrest. And so over here in Singapore, I must say that uh, since the pandemic, we have seen families going through all kinds of stress, you know, pa new parents, new families, children struggling with home-based learning and caregivers, you know, the parents have to frantically trying to find uh, extra help caregivers to be at home. And then while the pandemic is settling down and borders opening in March, we have, we're seeing inflation. You know, one of the worst in the past 10 years, seeing a rise of the prices for food, services, transport. So it's been a stressful time. And not just the children and family having such stressful time, but our caregivers, our teachers, parents, social medical workers are going through tremendous stress. And many of them are struggling. And in March this year, we had a survey done for the university students in Singapore. Half of them reported that they're going through a huge amount of uh, stress and they say half of them said that they're struggling with loneliness depression and that has led to all kinds of addiction addiction to netflix you know uh, video games uh, phone games and uh, for adults not new to us some of us are addicted to work right and online shopping and what you have so it's a stressful time. It's been a stressful time for a season. Yeah, back to you, Steve. Thank you, Joe. So in every life event that uh, the Lord has us go through, in, in other words, in all of these uh, troubled waters that seem to overwhelm us at times, there's always invitations from him. That's hard to see, and it's going to ask for great faith on our part, but there's always invitations from us. So, so let's, let's just name three invitations right up front and, and look at how these things will, will unfold. There's always the invitation to abide and abide uh, um you know, that's really good. We're going to see how that means to have faith and to have trust and, and, and to allow ourselves to be uh, hugged as such by our Heavenly Father. And, and then uh, there's going to be uh, an invitation for us to move beyond isolation. Now, physical isolation. Think about what we all did in the pandemic. We all isolated. We spent hours and days upon Zoom. We didn't go to physical church uh, meetings together we, uh, and worship services together. I taught. I didn't have classes face-to-face. -face. I taught them online on Zoom. Um, and so anyway, it put us in a place of isolation that I think the Lord is asking us to uh, wisely and lovingly um, reconsider. And, and then thirdly, um, there's an invitation for us to join with the worldwide family of God in the ongoing mission of uh, the kingdom. Now, there's a couple of major obstacles that, um, that come up in our lives. And so I want you to see these two terrible uh, obstacles that, uh, that we have to deal with in, in the next slide. Uh, so here, here they are, and uh, look at this. Isolation on the one hand, 
and insulation on the other. What's isolation? Isolation is where I pull away from the uh, emotional, spiritual um, interaction with others that the Lord created me to have. I mean, we are, we are not uh, individuals. We are, we are, I'm sorry, we are individuals, but we're not, to, uh, we're not created to live merely as individuals, but we are created to live in a community of people. And then the other terrible thing that happens is insulation. Now, insulation always follows isolation. Insulation is where then I just stop. I start putting up walls that I may not even be aware of where I, I just quit hearing. I stop hearing what the Holy Spirit has to say to us. Now, sometimes as we look at this next slide, sometimes we need to understand, oh, here's isolation and, and uh, <clears throat> then the next one, insulation. But sometimes also we need to understand the tactics of the enemy. And boy, this is, uh, this is gonna be a tough one. Um, this is what C.S. Lewis taught us to do, you know, when uh, he wrote uh, some of his uh, some of his texts about uh, 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 screw tape and and all of that. Those those amazing amazing texts he wrote, where he he looked at the 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 dark side of things so that we could understand how the enemy tries to uh, to get a hold of us. All right, so in any crisis, the evil one seeks to, now watch these, look at, look at these, look at these. Always, he's going to try and implant fear. Fear is tied to a specific event. So for the disciples, fear was uh, the waves, the wind and the waves overwhelming them, sinking them. But anxiety is free-floating. Anxiety is... Um, that's just where you just feel uneasy about all of life or much of life. You may have one triggering event, such as some, a fearful uh, thing that's happened, but then anxiety takes over the rest of your life, and you can't really quite pinpoint it down. It's, it's, a, spiritual, it's a spiritual disease. Now, look at the, look at the next one here. Uh, inevitably, then, inevitably, um, Fear and anxiety, if, if unchecked and not healed by the presence of God, they are going to instill panic. Right now, for instance, in the States, uh, there are a number of young families, uh, young mothers who are panicked, uh, rightly so, because they are having a difficult, difficult time getting baby formula. But then again, if left unchecked, panic will result in hopelessness. Uh, it's the disciples screaming out on the Sea of Galilee, we're going to die, we're going to die. It's, it's, it's all over with. Now look at the, these next points then. So the enemy will seek in the midst of all of this type of panic and hopeful, hopelessness and Fear and anxiety, what's he going to do? He's going to seek to isolate us from one another. It's crazy, but it will, we'll start pulling away from uh, the broader community of faith. We may stay close to one or two people, but we're going to pull away from the broader community of faith. Well, why does he want us to do that? Because he wants, well, he knows that there is there is life-giving power, life-giving power in um, tight community, good, wholesome Christian community. And he really knows there's a death for him when the body of Christ worships the living God. And he knows that there is immense power far beyond anything he has. Uh, uh, instilled in the communion of the saints. That's, that's the ones, the Christians in heaven, and that's the Christians now that uh, are here on earth. So let's see the, the, uh, the next slide here. Then, uh, or the next point, um, 
then inevitably he insulates us from the word of God and from the Holy Spirit. And of course, if, if you get insulated from what God is trying to say and speak into our lives, and, and if we don't hear his invitations that the Holy Spirit is bringing to us, then we just collapse uh, into despair. Lord, have mercy. And so the end of all of that is that uh, faith, which is trust, hope, which is deep uh, confidence, confidence that God is who he said he is, who he says he is, and God um, is at work redeeming the world and redeeming his people. And love, of course, is, is that unity with Father, Son, and Holy Spirit that purifies us and, and uh, enables us to seek God's best intentions for others. Now, there is a healing balm. There's a cure as we move on in our slides. There's a cure for his people. And so I want you to, to, to watch closely now at these, with these next slides and, and see this uh, cure. The Lord God created you and he created me primarily to honor him. Now, how do we honor him? Well, we ascribe worth and we ascribe value to him. We simply say, you are the Lord, you are the creator, and you are the sustainer. And I honor you for that. I thank you for that. I, I, I return all of the blessings that you've given to me back to you, and I bless you for who you are. This is called worship, and it's what we are going to be doing through eternity. And then there's abiding, and in abiding, I'm drawing close to that embrace. Just envision the embrace of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, and how through Jesus we are invited into that embrace. Let me uh, share a very touching thing that has uh, that has helped me here, uh, even in the month of May, in the first two weeks of of May, I saw an amazing phenomenon take place in the Ukraine. In the Ukraine, I, I kept seeing pictures after picture after picture of Ukrainians in the midst of devastation, just uh, where war ha had violated their entire landscape, uh, destroyed their homes, their buildings, their, their cities. Ukrainians right out in the middle of that, what were they doing? They were planting flowers and vegetable gardens, and some were planting uh, crops. And I thought, that's it. That's it. In, in, in the midst of, of all of the stresses that we feel and in the terrible waters that are coming against us, worship really is going out and praising God that he is the one who is setting things right in my personal life, but much more importantly, in the greater world. And so as we worship as a body, as we worship, uh, it's like we're planting the flowers and the vegetables and the crops of God. We're helping him uh, in this uh, day and time. And so, yes, in, in the next slide, we're, we're going to see the recovering of the sacred in our everyday lives. Just think about the planting of beautiful flowers and uh, the, the, the goodness that vegetable gardens bring to us and, and the, the joy that wheat fields bring and rice fields and uh, um, and cornfields uh, that feed the world. So it's, uh, what is this uh, recovering the sacred? Well, we're going to allow the Lord to grow beauty in our lives. Now you're going to see here uh, in this next slide what this is called. This is historically been called the means of grace. 
Now, you may have never heard of that term, but let's look at a wonderful uh, quote from Dallas Willard. Dallas Willard is in heaven now. He was a, a philosopher uh, from the States, uh, but a great man of God, and he, he loved this whole area of spiritual formation. Now, as you just glance over this, this quote then, um, you'll see these gifts that he's talking about. So uh, the disciplines then in the clearest sense, he wrote, means to that grace and also to those gifts, spiritual disciplines exercise unto godliness are only activities undertaken to make us capable of receiving more of his life and power without harm to ourselves or others. Now, St. Augustine uh, helped Willard really set the is up centuries, centuries before. So St. Augustine, what does St. Augustine say? You are what you receive. Ah, do you hear this? This kind of stands against the whole uh, push of, uh, uh, how do you say it? Uh, how do you, how do y'all say it in Singapore? Kiasu, am I saying it right? Uh, Kiasu, you know, you got to push harder and, and only if you work hard will things come to you. Okay, we do have to work hard uh, as Christians. However, Augustine knew it. Augustine knew it. What really makes us is what we receive from, uh, from God. So let's go to the next slide where we are called to follow Jesus' example. Now, we don't have time to look at all these scriptures. You'll have these scriptures up where you can come back and study them your, uh, your, yourselves. But Jesus is the one who gave us what all of this is saying. He's the one who gave us the example for implementing spiritual practices in our lives. That's, that's, like, that's like preparing the garden of our life or preparing our lives to be a garden for his love and for his, um, his goodness. Now, uh, if you look at the next uh, slide of disciplines, uh, of abstinence, and uh, uh, must be, so abstinence is where I'm going to pull away from doing something, you know, as important as being in fellowship is with others, and it is important. I also have to balance that out with uh, having a life of um of intimacy with our Lord and times of quietness and aloneness with him. So uh, abstinence is counterbalanced with these disciplines of engagement. And we're going to see lists here. Let me read it. The disciplines of abstinence counterbalance tendencies to sins of commission. Uh, that's something that, you know, we just we make a decision to do something wrong uh, and break the known law of God. And the disciplines of engagement counteract sins of omission. Well, om omission is where I just make a decision not to do something. So if you look at the list now um, that Joe uh, prepared for us, we won't go over all, all of them, but um, you can go back and, and study, study them. Uh, look, let, look at the highlights on, on the list under abstinence. Surely we've got to be about the study of the word, uh, which is very active, about worship, celebration, about serving others, praying. Anyway, uh, fellowship, and then you look at the disciplines of abstinence, of solitude, and silence, and fasting. Uh, these, are, these are all classic uh, means of grace. Now, let me uh, let um, Joe lead us now in these next slides. Thank you, Dr. Steve. Yes. Um, yes, when we pass through the water of stressful times, we are, God is calling us, inviting us back to the place of worship who he created us to do, to be worshippers. And it's in the time of worship that we are drawn to magnify in God. And as we magnify in God, things that stress us up, 
will somehow grow strangely dim. And take the example of King Jehoshaphat. When war is breaking out and enemies are charging towards him, Second Chronicles chapter 20, what did he do? He called the people of God, Judah, together, women, children, uh, fathers, everybody, so that uh, they can worship and return to God and worship and ask for help in their desperation. And what did he say? He prayed before Judah. He prayed that, Lord, the God of our ancestors, are you not the God who is in heaven? You rule over all the kingdoms of the nations. Power and might are in your hand, and no one can withstand you. So it's a time of worship that Jehoshaphat led the people to the place of worship, and it's the place, this place of worship becomes the place of decoration. They declare who God is, the Almighty God, the God who rule over all the kingdoms of the nation. They are not to fear and fret. And do it's the end of the, his prayer. He prayed. He prayed, Oh God, will you not judge them, the enemies? For we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. So he's in a place of worship. King Jehoshaphat led the people of God, Judah, to the place of decoration to once again proclaim who God is and also to draw the people of God to the place of dependence, return to depend on God and return to surrender their lives to God. Yeah, so throughout the pandemic, this is what God has been teaching me over and over again, that when we pray, we tell God how big our problems are, isn't it? When we come to God to pray. But when we worship, we tell our problems how big our God is. And this is an important place that we need to return to again and again. And I just want to share quick stories of what families in Asia have started doing, you know, early this year. And I'll just share with you what God has been doing in the family. Amazing stories. Okay, this is the first of them. Um, Taiwan, my, my brother and my student uh, at East uh, from Mongolia. So early this year, they were faced with many challenges as a family. I won't elaborate here, you know, the challenges they were facing. But he and his wife decided to start this family discipline of worship on Sunday. So after going to church on Sunday, they come back home and they will gather as a family to worship God. But I must say, initially, he said that it was tough. It was very tough. It was messy and the children could not sit, sit and uh, pay attention for long. But they persisted. They met again and again every Sunday at home after church service. And then gradually, the children are loving it. And then the children gradually take over. Like the daughter became a worship leader, leader and, and the father has to follow. <laughs> and then the father also read God's word and together they were doing this until now. And this is their family altar. No table, but time and space carved out just to worship God. Do you all have a family altar. Those of you who have children, um, when is the last time your family gathered to worship God together? We need not have to have a table, but just space and time to worship God together. And this is another family, a beautiful family. Um, she's my student from India. And after attending my course on spiritual formation at home, she decided to practice what she learned. So each evening after dinner, her daughter, her nine-year-old daughter will call TV time, TV time. That's what he wanted. she wanted to do after dinner. But the mom and dad came together and they did all kinds of things to worship God together. After dinner, they read God's word or they pray. Sometimes they go out as a family to walk in the nature and worship God. And as a result of that, we see God transforming this family. Now, the daughter will not call and shout for TV time, TV, TV time. The daughter will say, family time, family time. And this is so wonderful. And my own family, um, my family do not worship like Taiwan's family uh, from Mongolia. Uh, we gather on Sunday in the evening to celebrate Sabbath together. We will have Sabbath meal where we eat together for two hours sometime or longer. And this is a time where we recount God's goodness as a family. Look back the week and celebrate God's goodness. And this become uh, a place that we can rest together 
And as we go back on Monday to work, we work from rest. And so for me personally, I go back to work Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, looking back at the goodness of God as we celebrated as a family. Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I look forward to the next Sabbath together as a family. So let me ask you all a question. What is the first thing you reach out to in the morning when you wake up? Is it the newspaper? Is it the handphone? Um, how about the theologians say, as Christians, we should have the Bible on one hand and the other hand, the newspaper. It's about we should look at the newspaper from the lenses of the Bible. The problem today in the 21st century is this, that we place our work and the handphone, we want to stretch out our hand, get the handphone to look at the news for today. We're eager to find out what's happening to our friends or social media. So the world, the work has taken a high priority and we do not have space to hear from God. Henry Nouwen said a very meaningful quote in his writing, moving from solitude to community to ministry. He said in the spiritual life, the word discipline means the effort to create space in which God can act. We need to have the space to listen, to return to God. And that's where we encounter God as we return to his word and to pray. Pass the time back to Steve. Well, thank you, Joe. Those were rich, rich uh, living illustrations and very solid. Thank you. Um, so in worship now, we're ascribing worth to God. We do this personally. We do this with our family. We do this with our friends. And most certainly we do this in corporate uh, worship together with the body of Christ. And, and so what worship is doing, it's, it's drawing us into an embrace from the whole family of God, all of the Christians, as well as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And so when you are held, have you ever thought about when you are held? I mean, when, when you're protected like that? Uh, it's, it's, it gives you a great sense of trust. Now, uh, this business of trust is uh, critical for us because we believe as Christians that God is leading his entire creation toward a glorious completion. And uh, so we say that we trust then in his providential care. What does that mean? That means right in the midst of whatever we are called to go through, that uh, God promises to be with us. So who is God? Who is he? Um, look at these three questions. In other words, who is this God that we worship? How does he move in history? And what are his promises to his people? Well, let's go on to Psalm 136.1. Um, and, and we see this great foundational truth. And what is it? God is good. Uh, the Old Testament's kind of built on this foundational give thanks to the Lord, to Yahweh, for he is good. His love endures forever. In other words, his name, his nature is what? It's love. When we say he is good, it means that throughout his entire being of who he is, there is no shadow of darkness whatsoever. Only good and goodness, and that goodness then overflows to all that he creates. And we know it overflows because he sustains us. Now, if you look at the next uh, slide, what we see is in this Matthew 7, uh, 7 through 11 uh, quote from uh, the Sermon on the Mount, um, we're going to see a uh, comparison going on. So he's comparing God to an earthly father or grandfather like myself. And of course, I know myself only uh, primarily as a broken human being. And I have not loved as perfectly as I am called to love. But even as a broken human being, 
I have, uh, I know how to give good gifts to my children and to my grandchildren. I don't give them evil things. So look at verse 11. If you then, though you are evil, I don't get offended at that. All that's saying is that all of us are, are broken and are impacted by original sin and that we need help. I mean, we need, uh, we need a savior beyond what we can do for ourselves for sure. So if you then who are broken, evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, look at that. How much more will your father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? Now, so what's he, what's the good, what are the good gifts here? It's his presence and his restoration in our lives and in our um, relationships. And, and so when we look at when we look at promises that he gives, there's so many promises and and that's going to have to be a, another another webinar there. But basically, the promises are he's going to be with us through whatever waters we have to go through. So let's look at this movement in the next slide of um, his uh, kind of how the Lord moves us in this from through to um, <clears throat> pattern. So we move from these places of isolation, insulation. Now that's the fear. That's the fear and anxiety places from. We're going to go through waters, learning how to trust and how to uh, ascribe glory and put our focus not on the waves that are coming over us, but on who God is. That's worship. We're not focusing on the collapse around us, though we don't deny uh, hardship and evil in the world, but we are putting our primary focus in our hearts on who God is. And then that brings us to a place of life-giving connection. It's the two part to where we're abiding with God, and then we're receiving love and help and strength from others. Now, um, let's take a break here and see. Jonathan uh, may have some first round questions for us, and we'll just take a little bit of time to go through those uh, uh, questions. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Steve and, and Joe, for that very meaningful uh, exposition and practical examples that we have heard, uh, especially to Joe, uh, really makes my heart really warm and uh, reflect upon how time has been spent with the family that is worthwhile and meaningful in this area of worship. There is a first question that uh, uh, came out. And we would like to put that to, to the both, both of you uh, and then see how best you can uh, answer that question, all right? So the question that we have received is this, what is secrecy in the discipline of abstinence? What is secrecy in the discipline of abstinence? Okay, back to both of you. Joe, I'll let you answer that. I, I believe the question is, what is secrecy? Okay, please, Joe, go ahead. Okay, uh, basically, to sh uh, long the long explanation to keep it simple is the discipline of of uh, not uh, magnifying and putting on show uh, the deeds your deeds that you show to others. You know, deeds of kindness that you show to others. So um, there are people who practice this by uh, giving giving money to someone who's in need, but making it anonymous, not uh, declaring to the world, hey, you know, this amount of money I'm giving to this organization, to the Red Cross and whatever. So they, they do it. It's really out of um, their love, their devotion to Christ. And so it's a discipline that they put, to, they put themselves through and not uh, magnifying and make public you know, uh, to others, yeah, it's just not to show off, not to uh, declare so loudly to the world, but it's to be done uh, to God, you know, 
Yeah. So, yeah. Steve, do you have anything to add? Sure. Let me let me add as well that in our Christian walk, we really do need to have close uh, uh, fellowship with other believers. I mean, on a very faithful, regular basis, and we also need to confess our sins to other believers because all of us have fallen short of of God's intentions for us. And so secrecy is also going to come in in that I'm going to protect others if, if a sin is a, in a, or a collapse has, has been uh, mentioned and it's not a crime. Now, we, don't, we, don't, we cannot cover crime, but um, uh, then I, I'm going to seek to build that individual up and not uh, uh, broadcast their shortcomings to others so that I've got confidence then in these small groups. Thanks. Yeah. All right. Uh, thank you for that, uh, for those answers. And uh, well, keep, keep, please uh, keep putting in your, your questions in the Q&A box. Uh, we'll get to it. But now if I can uh, invite us back again to, to Steve and Joe as they continue on in this, uh, on this talk. Thank you. So uh, this movement, this, and thank you, Jonathan, this movement, this from through to movement, um, a huge part of this movement is that it's going to take us, uh, it's going to move us as a community. And uh, let's see this uh, next slide then on, on, there we go. So we're worshiping both individually and with a with a with the local body of Christ i mean you may only have two or three in the local body but it doesn't matter we're worshiping together and so we're asking a, a key issue here well then what should that look like and and let me just say um, I, I know that uh, in your cultural context there, there, there's going to, it's not going to look like the context that, that I'm a part of, uh, but there are some, some God-given universals in this. In fact, there's going to be four key elements. So, so let's look at the elements in the apostles' teaching from the word, from, um, from the book of Acts. So if you look at, uh, look at the book of Acts, and uh, Acts 2, starting 41, uh, going through 47. Now, these are the first followers of Jesus, and they've been baptized, and, you know, lots of folks are added to them. So you look at 42. What do you see? They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, breaking of bread and prayer. Now get those four things in, in, in your mind right now, if you're making notes. Apostolic teaching or the apostles' teaching, that's the word of God. That's the New Testament. And so we're definitely called first to be anchored in God's word. All right, then as, as, as you, you, you look on at this, it, uh, so uh, we're also uh, called to be a part of the fellowship, the breaking of bread and the prayer. So as we look at this next slide, you're, you're going to see these four elements unfold. Fellowship, breaking of bread, prayer, fellowship. Look, they're coming together. They're coming together um, and they're worshiping together. And what are they doing when they come together? They are praying together. So it's a worshiping community. They're coming together. They're, 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 they're sharing meals. They're, they're partaking in the Lord's Supper. They're praying together. Now, now um, I think it's on the next slide where, where they are uh, they're sharing. Look, all the believers were together. And what? They had everything in common. In other words, if there's need, they are sharing out of their abundance with others. They sold property and possessions to give to anyone who had need. So look at this. Look at this. They're, they're anchored in the word. They're worshiping and praying and celebrating God and Holy Communion as a body. Then third, they're practicing hospitality. Um, 
this is this is huge um and it, it's 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 missing today in many parts of the west i found i think that the asian culture actually does this far far better this practicing of hospitality than the western cultures so i think it's far more appropriate now for joe to take it from here so joe uh, please follow up Yes, uh, thank you, Dr. Steve. Yeah, just share a quick story of how my family has been blessed with the gift of hospitality from our church covenant group. We call it CG. Some of uh, Singaporeans here, you may be calling it CG in your church. This is a small group that we belong to in our church. Yeah, so I was down with uh, COVID <laughs> February this year. Uh, it was a very stressful time because when I was down with COVID, um, four days later, I'm supposed to lead a retreat for a precious group of crew staff uh, in Changi Cove, you know. And so I was feeling stressed about, you know, trying to work out um, what's going to happen now that I'm down with COVID. And at the same time, we were stressed as a family because at the time, there was a reduced stock. You know, I was out of stock for our cell test kit, the ART test kit. Yeah, so in our desperation, we just send a text message out to our CG. We just say, hello, I'm down with COVID. Anyone has extra ART test kit? And within seconds, literally within seconds, there were two sisters texting me and say, hey, Joe, I'm coming to your house in the RT test kit. We were overwhelmed. They were so ready to respond and not just supplying a test kit to us, but they supply us food and fruits and flowers and we were just so overwhelmed yeah by their hospitality and this really amazed us because x chapter 2 verse 44 and 45 comes to life for us yeah and you know when the bible writes for us that the young the the, the early church believers they were together and ha had everything in common it doesn't mean that we bring all our assets to the warehouse and divide you know equally among all but it does mean that those who have more blessed, those who have less. And we see that happening in my church uh, cell group, I mean, our covenant group. And we see that happening in my church uh, cell group, I mean, our covenant group. So we're so blessed to have experienced uh, the reality of uh, what Acts chapter 2, verse 44 and 45 says. Back to you, Steve. Uh, so um, right now, uh, we actually have a little time uh, for some more questions before we move on to the last part. So maybe we'll take a few sessions, sec a question before we move to the last part. Okay, well, we have a number of questions that just came in and um, uh, uh, there's a very key question here, um, and I think related to, uh, especially when uh, Steve was talking about isolation, insulation, and so I'm not sure which one of you would answer this, but uh, the question is, how can I help someone who is isolated or insulated to turn outwards to worship God? How can I help someone who is isolated or insulated to turn outwards to worship God? Uh, always we follow the example of Jesus and uh, Jesus invited people, uh, but he didn't force people. Now, um, in our settings uh, here, we, 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 we saw our church services go down to almost nothing. And um, uh, one way we were in, able to invite people out is to get them into a, a small groups on Zoom settings. And then uh, we saw our leaders uh, uh, lovingly encourage people, say, it's okay now. The medical community is saying, you can come back now. Wear a mask. Yes, do whatever. Take whatever precaution. So I think we lovingly encourage and one-on-one um, -on -one contact uh, is always helpful uh, to never leave someone in, in an isolated 
place if if we can if we can help uh, help them. Joe, please, if you want to add. Yeah, uh, just I would just zoom into. Let's say it's in a family, and let's say you have a family member who's struggling with isolation and just not opening up. Uh, to me, uh, I will go back, return to the place of worship on my own first. You know, uh, meaning I have to bring this uh, need before the Lord and really pray, pray that the Lord will continue to work in this person's heart, uh, no matter. Um, how close this person is right now, but to begin praying. And also, um, just, uh, you know, this, this um, quote that someone shared with me, but I, I agree that we cannot give to others what we do not have. Yeah, so if this person is not ready to be part, example, part of family worship, uh, well, for those who are ready, we can begin, you know, just begin sitting together. It may not be like, coming together to sing hymns or read God's word, but begin simple. Something simple starts small, meaning have family uh, dinner together. Start with family dinner together. And let's begin by praying, you know, praying together as a family. Yeah, so for those who are not ready to open up, we just gradually invite. Is there, is there something? Just ask a simple question. Is there anything we can be praying for you? Yeah, and gradually keep inviting, keep inviting the person to, to join in. But as Dr. Steve has put it nicely, we do not force, but we keep giving, offering the invitation to those in the family members who are not ready to join in. Yeah, I think I'll stop here. That's great. That's great. Yeah. Thanks so much again. All right. So, all right, we are moving it on to the last part. And so give us, give us your, your good counsel in this, uh, the last section. Thank you. Okay, uh, let me carry on uh, with the last section. So we talk about moving away from isolation, insulation to life-giving connection with God and God's people. It's true returning to this place of worship, returning to the community of God. But if you just stop right here, then it's not complete. Because as the title of the webinar say, passing through the waters, meaning the stressful time is just for a season. It's just for a season right now. So it's not going to last forever. Meaning God is going to deliver us in his time, in his way. Right? So as we come to this last part, we want to share with us that for Christian spiritual formation, sorry, it's not just coming to the place of worship community, but mission as well. So let me share with you uh, this beautiful quote from a local uh, Asian uh, theologian, Dr. Alex Tang. He said, Christian spiritual formation is the intentional and ongoing process of inner transformation to become like Jesus Christ himself, maturing with others in the community of the people of God to advance God's redemptive purposes. Yeah, so... So this, um, this definition helps us to see that, hey, God is not just inviting us to grow in our relationship with him together with God's people, but ultimately for the greater redemptive purpose that he has in mind. So we, one good question to ask ourselves right now, with borders opening, what is God's invitation for us to area of mission? Mark 3 reminds us, Jesus went out on a mountainside, called to him to those he wanted, and they came to him. He appointed 12 that they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach. So this element of Jesus gathering his disciples, not just in relating with him, growing a relationship with him, but that the disciples may join him in a greater mission, the greater purpose. So in the same way for us, when God called us to a relationship with him, it's not just that we will grow closer with each other, with one another, but that we will join him on board for the greater mission of making him known. So how is God inviting you and me to his mission? And uh, I just want to share some stories uh, before we close tonight on how as a school, East Asia School of Theology, how the Lord 
invite us to join him at work. There are so many stories to tell you tonight. So I just picked this particular one that really touched my heart. It's just three months ago. But to bring our minds uh, to a clearer focus, going for mission doesn't mean that we must pack up our bag and go to another country like Africa. But doing mission, being missioner, means actually doing mission right where we are. It means adopting the posture of a missionary, learning, adapting to the culture around us while remaining biblically sound. Yeah, so we are privileged as a school uh, to that God has provided this premise with, uh, for us, 118 Chichi Road. And I must say, this is a place that's so rich in culture and food. You know, there's lots of food along the street and opposite our school. And more than that, it's a beautiful people that we meet every day. So there are people on this street from Thailand, Vietnam, Indonesia, Malaysia, Turkey, India, Bangladesh. And we were so delighted when we first moved here. And as we did prayer walk together as a school, the Lord keep telling me the same message again and again. That is, love these people into his kingdom. Yeah, so we have to begin to think about how can we do that? So on the street, there were many beautiful people. This is one lady. She is owning a fruit store. The fruit store existed before I was born. So it was, it has been in Chuche for a long time. And she's older than me by 20 years. And also met a lady 20 years younger than me. Now, I just met her early this year. And uh, she shared that she doesn't mind I share her story uh, with you all. Uh, but welcome your friends to my shop, she said. <laughs> so she invented the, I don't think this dessert is new. It's a Japanese uh, donut called dochi dochi in Singapore, meaning donut plus a Japanese mochi. So it's dochi. And so after he created this uh, and started the business, I was curious. I walked across to her shop one day and our friendship started with a simple question. I asked her, tell me your story. Please tell me your story. How did Dochi Dochi, Dochi all started? So she shared the story of how she spent much effort thinking when she was stuck in a pandemic in Australia. So when God opened the door, she quickly came home to Singapore and started this business. She threw all of her energy and her time to start this business. And I said, heard the story. I was moved. After I left the shop, the Holy Spirit nudged me. How are you going to be retooled? How are you going to retool yourself for the unfinished mission with the Lord? Today, there's lots more opportunity. God has opened up for us so many opportunities, even through digital missions. So how are we going to retool ourselves for these amazing opportunities ahead of us? And with that, ease as a school, we decided that we want to try something new. Never done this before, but we will try we we'll just say yes to God. And so we decided, with one student taking the initiative to say, why don't we buy bread necessities and bless the resident at Chuchit? So we did. We put the pack in 60 packs of bread and uh, what do you call it? Um, my face masks. And then we sent out to the residents. We were also overwhelmed. Initially, we were nervous, wondering whether we would chase out or whether people were bang their door and then, you know, chase us out. We were nervous and we, it was something new, but we decided to give it a try. And we were overwhelmed and the residents were so welcoming. In fact, two of the families opened their door and asked, would you like to come in for a drink? We were surprised. And I, my partner and I, okay, this is my partner, student, Joshua, went with me and we went to knock six doors out of the six houses we knocked, five of them were open, not just open their doors, but they opened their hearts and allowed us to share the gospel of Jesus Christ with them. So we were really overwhelmed by this wonderful uh, encounter, you know, wonderful journey with the Lord. So my dear friends, what is, who is someone in your sphere of influence that you can reach out to at this moment of your life? Is there somebody in your area of workplace? Is there someone in your neighborhood? Somebody who may be struggling and loneliness? Is there someone 
that you can reach out to. As we draw this uh, sharing to a close, I just want to wrap up to move to the place of connection with others and with God. We go through by returning to the place of worship, community with God's people, and then mission. But it's all done in, it's all done empowered by the Holy Spirit, with the ministry of the Holy Spirit as our foundation, undergirded by the Holy Spirit. So as we close, yes, we will return to your question and uh, we really want to uh, answer your important question and they are really good question and important to us. But I thought more importantly, as Dr. Steve has said tonight, God is always inviting us, inviting us to what he's doing in our lives. So as we close, I just want us to take some time to reflect. Let's pause and reflect. What is God's invitation to us tonight? In our life, is there space carved out to worship God daily, to grow with a few others in a small community, and to join God and His kingdom mission? If not, what is an area of change that we can make in our lives and perhaps in our schedule? Are we willing to wake up and make a new habit in our lives, to have a new rhythm in our lives by turning to God's word and listen to his still small voice before we turn to the newspaper or social media? Let's take some time to just one, two minutes to write that down in our journal and then we will close in prayer and move into our question and answer. As we close, let us invite, let me invite you to listen to the life giving word of God tonight. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. Let's pray together. Our good, good Heavenly Father, we thank you for tonight. Thank you, the Lord, you're always inviting us to return to you, to return to the place of worship, so that we might listen to your voice in the midst of all our challenges and stress. We thank you that, Lord, your life-giving word can satisfy our soul. Nothing in this world, no one in this world can fully satisfy us, but you alone, O oh Lord. You can satisfy our soul. So Lord, we return to you tonight and in your mercy and in your grace, we pray for our brothers and sisters in this webinar room, those who are struggling in their work and the home front, those who feel stuck in their marriages, in their family life. Lord, we pray we pray, O oh God, that you draw them back to you and grant them breakthroughs in where they, they are stuck right now. O oh Holy Spirit, continue to speak your comfort, your love, your life-giving word Lord, to my brothers and sisters. And as we return to you, Lord, help us reach out. Help us be a blessing to someone who may be still struggling 
and the stress of life. Teach us to be a blessing as we have been so blessed by you. Thank you, Lord, for your amazing grace, your unfailing love to each and every one of us. We give you thanks. We just want to say we love you, God. We ask of this in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Joe, and um, Steve. Uh, those are reflective times. Now, this seminar is not yet over because uh, we, we have a few questions that uh, you have provided, and we will come to those questions shortly. But if I may now turn, uh, ask your attention to return towards the screen and, and just to uh, look at the slide, I would encourage you to get your smartphone ready because uh, there are a number of slides here, uh, some of which you might be interested to relook at at a, a later time. And so do scan the codes as I go through it, because this is of uh, importance to you. Uh, this some of it will be a blessing to you as well. The first slide is just a way for us to uh, improve further. We can on such webinars. And so uh, if you can just scan the QR code and, and then later on, if you can uh, give us your input, your feedback, uh, on this uh, uh, webinar, we will appreciate that very much. Okay, uh, next slide, please. Now, I, I do know that there are some of you who perhaps uh, have not written in questions, uh, but as you think and reflect back on this webinar, you may have more questions, or you want to just to talk to someone about some issues that uh, the Lord has impressed upon your heart. Then uh, please write to Jo. Uh, jo will, will receive your questions and uh, she will consult with Dr. Martin as well if that's needed uh, in, in response to your questions. And so just uh, just quickly, you know, just jot this down, joeliu at east.edu.sg. Right, next slide, please. Good, uh, we have a special promotion um, for those of us who are attended this webinar. The Mass Media or the Media Ministry uh, has a, an entire slew of resources related to spiritual formation that's been curated just for us uh, under the direction of uh, Steve and Joe. And so I would recommend that you scan this code and then go back again to the website. Uh, these two books, for example, Sacred Rhythm uh, and also Spiritual Discipline by Dallas Phillips are all classics uh, that will be found in, the, in that uh, web page. Uh. All right, next, please. Okay, there's an online sale going on in uh, Media Ministry. Again, if you're interested, just go ahead and scan that. All right, um, next slide, please. Thank you. Um, this, as you know, is celebrating its 30th anniversary and we have a special promotion called 30 on 30 on our regular courses. These are courses that our seminary students attend but we're opening up as well to all believers who would like to learn more about the Bible, theology, ministry, personal development, and even spiritual formation. And so uh, you can scan that code uh, to go to the site where they have a list of classes and you just need to pay 30 bucks per class, which is a steal, because usually that will cost you uh, a few hundred dollars uh, if you were to pay the full fees for it. All right, so you can scan that if you like. If not, let's move to the next slide, which is just a list of... Um, list of classes which you can't see now too clearly unfortunately so uh, we'll move to the next slide please okay um just a bit of um fyi that uh, dr bethan go the husband of joe uh, and, and joe herself will be conducting a course on a life of prayer a biblical portrait and spiritual practices for which you may be interested to attend this will fall under the 30 on 30 promotions and so if you go for this class, it will just cost you uh, 30 bucks. And so if you're interested, you can go ahead and scan that particular uh, QR code. Next, please. Thank you. Okay, uh, the, this and the next slide are just a way for you to stand with us in partnership 
uh, in this case, financial partnership. Uh, Crew is celebrating a 50th anniversary as well, and they have a few projects, including projects to send out uh, workers into the harvest field. And so um, feel free to scan that code and um, uh, through your iBanking app, uh, and then you can be able to, to give as the Lord needs you. Okay. Yes, this one is uh, the East. Same thing, the QR code is also for pay now. So you will need the iBanking app uh, to scan that uh, if you so desire to give. All right. Now, some of this information that I just shared with you would also be sent by email as a follow through uh, shortly. And so please look out for the email. Uh, some of this information, including resources, books, we have actually came up with a set of curated resources on our website just for this webinar. Uh, it's not on the site at all, but it will be found on the, uh, the follow-up uh, email. And so uh, please look up for that. Okay, good. Now I'd like to turn us back to um, Steve and, and Joe. Uh, at the same time, for those of you who are able to stay now, it's about 9, 20, 21. So it's still not 9, 30. So you can, you can stay on and, and uh, listen to the questions being answered. Their question, their answers may extend beyond 9, 30, but feel free to stay as long as you want. And then um, but they'll be around at least until 9.30 uh, to respond to these questions. All right, good. Thank you so much. I'm going to turn the time now back to uh, Steve and, and Joe. Thank you so much for answering these questions. Yeah. Okay. Um, so we have the first question on how do we gain strength when our children stray and we're not brought Christian way? And uh, the stress on a Christian mother is tremendous. So tough to stay calm and sane. Yeah, so um, I, I will share a little bit and maybe Dr. Steve would like to add on. Yes, it's true. It's, there's a lot of tremendous stress on uh, mothers uh, during the pandemic. And you're trying to get your family to come together with worship, but it's really not easy, uh, especially um, children, uh, I would say teens or even young adults that have some, well, walk out their faith, you know, not joining the church in a youth service anymore. Yeah, it's indeed a very, very tough challenge. And my, ans my answer, my response is, I think do not press them or uh, push them, you know, so hard. Uh, but I think uh, for these children, uh, I would say, I would just, Leave with you four four words. Uh, begin with loving them well. I think you know where they're struggling, uh, where they're hurting. Take time to listen. Take time to love them. You know where they are. Yeah, for you as mom, when you're feeling all the stress right now, uh, when pandemic is still going on, I would say I would encourage you to not struggle alone, but reach out to other moms. You know. Uh, like it or not, I think some somehow when we are struggling, we will always feel that this struggle is peculiar. You know, it's, it's only I am going through, I'm struggling. But the truth is there are many, many other mums who are also struggling. We do not know until we reach out to someone and say, hey, can you pray for me? Yeah, and that is what I did. You know, uh, last year, October was a very stressful time for my family yeah, because my 18-year-old daughter then, was going through a very, very tough season. Um, I had her permission to share for this webinar. Yeah, so she said, yes, mom, just not me who share, but if you share, that's okay. Yeah, so um, she was going through a very tough time because they, she was going through a whole bad episode of insomnia. Insomnia, you couldn't sleep at night. It started with just feeling extremely hungry after having a good dinner and strangely, when she goes to bed, she'll feel very hungry and that caused her to stay up and she couldn't sleep, struggle a lot in her sleep. And then that affected her appetite. So it has become a vicious cycle. Yeah, so, so she cried a lot during the season and we were all troubled. And I remember we, as my husband and I went to her and, and we told her that it's fine if she wants to see a doctor. There's nothing wrong seeing a doctor and find out what's going on. But after we prayed together, she will always come back to us and say, uh, Mom, that is okay. I think what I'm having is just strange stress, uh, strange time, a stressful period right now. 
but I do want to uh, trust God to go through this season. Yeah, so just let me have a share quickly. Uh, we didn't have a chance to share earlier on. Um, yeah, I, I don't know where my PowerPoint is. Uh, maybe later I will share if I can come back to it. But on the bed at night, sometimes she struggle hard. She will have this slip of paper beside her, paste on her, beside her bed. And these are promises from God that she claim on throughout that more than almost three to four weeks long in Zomnia. And then each time she pray, the Lord just comforted her. So this went on for almost a month. And it was hard for me, but we hang on together, trusting the Lord to deliver her in his time, in his way. Yeah, so one day suddenly she told me, morning woke up and she said, I slept through the night. And then gradually this whole insomnia just left and, you know, she knew that she was able to sleep through. And this happened when finally she was delivered. This was one week before her final, final exam. That's a pre-college exam. Yeah, so that was a wonderful episode for us as a family trusting the Lord. Yeah, so, but during the difficult time, I remember I shared with my fellow friends in church, a covenant group, to ask them to pray along with me because it's a tough struggle. And when I shared with them, interestingly, they all would, you know, started sharing their struggle as well. Some moms with other kids, you know, with their kids struggling, and we all just come together, lean in together in the community and pray for one another. And we, I must say that that was how we grow together in faith as a community. Yeah, so um, Steve, would you like to add on? Well, you did a beautiful job. Let me let me just add from a grandparent perspective. Uh, we we try to stay very uh, faithfully and regularly in touch with the children, our grandchildren and uh, children and grandchildren, and then with the with the grandchildren who live close to us. Um, we uh, we simply announce to them that we will be by at a certain time in the morning to pick them up, to take them to church with, with us. We actually don't ask them. We just announce. Now, we don't force it, but uh, it's, it's, God has is, is used that, and, and we are able to. Those children are faithfully with us in a worshiping community. So I, I love what you said, Joe, and I, I, I really cannot add much more than what you said. So thank you. Thank you, Steve. Okay, so let me show you a quick picture. The place of encounter for my daughter was right here. Yeah, and each time at night when she's struggling real hard, she just turned to this piece of paper. And these are promises from the Lord that pull her through a very dark season of her life. It's just no answer to her struggle. And she knew that she was somehow she was well physically, but she was going through a very stressful time. And we just praise the Lord for delivering her. Okay, let me quickly move on to the other question. Are there any concrete resources on family worship that you recommend? Yes. Let me share screen with you for some of the resources that I find um, really good. Uh, I believe in... Can you see this? Okay. Now, this is the... The, the resources that I recommended to my students who attended spiritual formation at home, these are free resources. And uh, this is a good one, the Beginner's Bible. They can teach a Bible story right from Genesis, the creation, and go through systematically uh, through the Bible. So this is one that I recommend when the kids are younger. Now, for the use, let me share another resource. For the, for the use, if you have... Um, let me pull out. Now, can you see this? You um, version daily bread. All right. Now, these are the free resources that you can recommend your youth and young adults, you know, to um, do the devotion. And but that you version is one that is very neat because after reading the devotion. We go on to this common page where we share our reflection, just to give you an idea. So this is a reflection written by my daughter. 
and then how uh, my son and my 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 husband we all just chip in to share our response after reading yeah from uh, i think we were doing uh, uh, efficient the book efficient and so this is one resource one good resource to do as a family now there are many whole lot resources uh, if you're still interested please email me and i will send you the whole list in the email i think that will work better okay uh there any other uh, question? Um, uh, hi, Joe. Uh, it, uh, that, that's, thank you for giving that, that uh, final list of resources. I'm just wondering, uh, maybe what we can do is, besides answering questions uh, for those who write, uh, wrote it to you about that, uh, maybe we can also add that, that list of um, a packet of information concerning family worship and include that, upload that onto the web page. Now, so just for all, the, all of those of you who are still with us, um, we, you will be given a link in the follow through email, which will be a link to our web page with a series of resources, of curated resources that, uh, that Joe has, has uh, uh, together with Steve, has come up with. And so we can add that information in there as well uh, in case you're interested and, and so that you, you can uh, uh, for free. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> all right, good. Um, okay, so, uh, you know, I think it is now uh, past 9.30, so um, may I request if you have any more other questions that has yet to be answered, uh, may I invite you to write in to joliu at east.edu.sg and we will try to respond to you uh, as soon as we can. Uh, once again, uh, I've been deeply ministered by Steve and Joe, but just by your honour sharing of the challenges you have faced, as well as the principles involved that we can apply in our lives. And then the call to commitment and prayer just now, Joe. Thank you for that, doing just that. Now. So I want to turn it back to you. Uh, I suppose this is the, the end of the whole thing, but if you want to just, uh, yeah. And Steve, do you have a final word for our people in the webinar? I'm very moved by uh, the... Uh, content that, that Joe has shared, and I'm thankful to be part of this. I, I want to encourage, especially my Asian brothers and sisters, uh, we need you to be strong in the Lord. Uh, uh, Christianity is under immense pressure in the West, and uh, uh, we need you to take the leadership now that God is calling you to take and to uh, step up to worldwide leadership uh, such as what what you're doing right here. So I, I just I just bless all of you in the name of Jesus and encourage you and, and I pray for you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Steve. Very touched by your words and uh, very encouraged that you come on board and and you woke up very very early in the morning. Uh, Dr. Steve is uh, 13 hours from us, so he got to work out really, really early this morning to join us. So thank you, Dr. Steve, and thank you for sharing your free online lecture with our audience. Yeah, so yes, we, we will do what you say uh, to rise up and continue to do what God has called us in his, for his kingdom here yeah, on earth. So thank you, everybody, for joining us tonight. We're so happy to have you join us. So good night, and we'll see you again. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Good night.